Alright, so in order to solve our problem of taking a string and converting it into its integer equivalent, so we're supposed to write a method that does that for us, what we're going to do is we'll take that problem and divide it into subproblems. And this should be your approach uh, in general when you're faced with any problem. Take that problem, divide it into smaller subproblems and deal with these ones, and that'll be easier for you. And then once you have solutions for those ones, you could combine the solutions and pro and get your overall solution for the overall problem. So what subproblems can we uh, get from that overall problem? Well, what we have here is we want to convert a string, so for example, 235, into an integer, 235. And this should be a numeric value that we could treat mathematically. So we could add it to another number, subtract it from another number, and so on and so forth. This is just a bunch of symbols. And in fact, it's a collection of characters. So this 2 is the character 2. And this hints at uh, one particular subproblem. One of the, the smallest units of problems that we have here is taking a character or a symbol and finding its numeric equivalent, 2. And this is our uh, base problem that we're going to have to solve. We're going to have to find a solution to this problem. And I've identified this as our first subproblem, determining the numeric value of each character. The next thing we have to do, so now that we've determined the numeric value of each character, so we have 2 here, we know it's a 2 as an integer, we know it's a 3, this is a 3, and we know this is a 5. We have to combine these numbers to get our 235. How are we going to do that? We can't really just add them together. We're not going to get 235 here, we're going to get 10. How are we going to get 235? The way to do that is to multiply each digit that we figured out from the first step by a place value. So a value that depends on where it is placed in the integer. So this 2 will have to be multiplied by 100 to get 200. This 3 will have to be multiplied by 10 to get 30, because this is in fact the equivalent of each one of these symbols, and this 5 multiplied by 1. So uh, we have these 230 and 5, and then we sum these products, and then we get our 235. So this is our two problems. We have to essentially figure out the numeric value of each character, and then compute the overall integer. So let's deal with the first problem we have here. So the first thing we need to do is find a way to convert a character to its numeric value. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to exploit a certain uh, property of uh, computers. Essentially, it's our understanding of computers that's at play here. We know that computers store bits. They don't store symbols. So a 2, for example, this is a symbol, a character, will have to be somehow converted into a string of bits. It's binary representation w composed of ones and zeros. And this is what's going to be stored in a computer. And this conversion is made uh, or, or done based on an encoding scheme, a character encoding scheme. This encoding scheme is basically just the map. So for example, if new we were dealing with only four characters, like say A, B, C, D, these are symbols, then we could decide that A will have the representation 0, 0, 0, 0, B will have 0, 0, 0, 1, C will have 0, 0, 1 and D will have 0, 0, 1, 1. So this is basically just like a map. We're mapping these characters onto stuff that we could store in a computer. And uh, t these encoding schemes, there's various encoding schemes, and uh, we're going to look at the ASCII character encoding scheme, which is shared or has common properties with many of the encoding schemes that we're, we usually deal with or programs deal with. And they're basically the character columns right here and this is the representations so a decimal representation this is a column of interest to us and in fact there are just a couple of rows that we are concerned with these are the ones right here so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 because we're only dealing with digits in our numbers and here what it's telling us is that 0 has a decimal representation of 48 so this is a mapping we're taking that symbol character into a decimal representation of 48 and this will eventually be mapped to binary numbers and this is what we're going to exploit in our algorithm so we're going to figure out the numeric equivalent of each character by using this map so we know that for example 1 is mapped to 49 in a program so if we know that 1 is 49 and 0 is 48 all we have to do is just 49 minus 48 and we get our 1 
and then we could deal with it mathematically as a numerical digit. And this is what we're going to do for every other uh, character. So we're going to have to deal with one of these characters, and for every one of them, if we wanted to get their numeric equivalent, all we're going to have to do is subtract it by the numeric equivalent of 0. So we're going to take the character, the code of 0, which is right here, and subtract it from the character we're looking at, and the compiler will understand that we're, try we're aiming at the numeric value. In fact, even when you m make comparisons in your program, for example, you say, uh, compare me this character to that character, is it larger than it? Then what it's essentially doing is performing this conversion, and it's converting, and it's performing a comparison on these representations. It can't really compare symbols. It's going to have to compare numerical representations. And so all we're doing is that we're exploiting this conversion and we're getting at these numbers performing some subtraction to get the number that we're aiming at. So this is our first problem that is solved. We can get numeric equivalents of every single one of our digits that makes up our string. The next problem is to compute the integer. So now we have all our digits. So if it was 235, we know we have a 2, we have a 3, and we have a 5. How are we going to get our overall integer of 235? What we could do is scan the string from left to right and multiply the first one by, for example, in this case, it would have to be multiplied by 100. So 10 to the 2, this one by 10 to the 1, and this one by 10 to the 0, which is 1. But if you scan it from left to right, you don't really know how many digits are coming up. I mean, it could be, there could be more digits right here, and you won't be able to know the power that you have to set to and multiply 2 by 10 to that power. So what we, you can do is from the left, and then at the start you set it to 0, your power, and then keep on increment. So what you're going to have to do is, um, so you start from the right, you multiply 5 by 1, and then this one you'll multiply, this is the place value, multiply it by 10 at every iteration. So you multiply by 10, you'll get your next uh, place value, and then you'll scan the next digit, 3, multiply it by that place value, and you'll get a certain value. So 30, and then that place value is multiplied by 10 once more, so you get 100, and then you take your 2 that you're scanning it, so you're going from right to left, and you're just taking this incremental approach. Multiply your 5 by a place value, which is calculated basically by multiplying by 10 at every iteration. But you, you notice that there are multiple, uh, there's a few multiplications involved here, and this is a little inefficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Horner's rule, which allows us to solve this this problem and reduce the number of operations involved. So here you notice that there's a multiplication to get the place value that we have to perform every time, and then there's this multiplication, a 2 by the place value. So what we're going to do is instead go from left to right, so we're going back to this left to right approach, and we're going to use Horner's rule, and, and what it tells us is that this is what you do. You take a number, so you start with here, you take your 2, and then if you notice that there's a digit that's coming up right after it, you multiply that by 10, and then you add that digit that comes right after it. And if you stop there, you could stop right there and say this is the end of it. But if there was a digit right after it, you take your result, perform the same process, multiply by 10, and then add your next digit, and so on and so forth. And in fact, this will give you the same thing. This will give you 235 if you perform the computation. And you notice that there's less multiplications involved. Uh, whereas in the other case, we had two multiplications for each iteration. Here, we only have one. So we only have one uh, multiplication for each iteration. So it allows us to reduce the number of operations. So take some time to see how these two things are equivalent. This is what we were doing earlier, and this is what we're doing right now. It reduces the number of operations here. The 10 to the 2 actually has 10 times 10. So this is a multiplication, an extra multiplication, whereas here we don't have that. And we're just dealing with 1 and 2 multiplications. Here we're dealing with 1, 2, and there are 2 right here. And there's, in fact, some multiplications going from here. So we've reduced the number of operations. We're going to use Horner's rule. And now there's one last thing that we have to deal with. So this is our second step to compute the overall integer. We're just going to use Horner's rule to get our overall integer. So we're done with that. One last step we have to deal with. What if it was a negative number? A negative number is basically given to us by the first character in the, in the, in the string. If it's a negative character, then we could scan that at the beginning. If it's negative, then we know we're going to set a flag, and then at the end we multiply it by minus 1. Multiply our resulting integer by minus 1.